welcome everyone. My name is Tatev Abrahamian. Um, I will be using, the, um, we'll be doing um, another day of looking at end games on the Forward Chess app and then also on chess.com and we'll be doing drills. So those of you who were here last time, yeah, I fixed, I fixed everything. Those of you who were here last time, we're doing 100 end games you must know. And today I chose another endgame book, which uh, I kind of read through it, um, like I didn't read it cover to cover, but I, I liked what I saw. And I think you guys will enjoy it as well. So we'll do different, we'll kind of jump around so you guys get a, an idea of what this book is like. And we'll start by using the Forward Chess app, and those of you who don't know what Forward Chess is, it's an app, or... Um, here, I'll do the command. Um... Interactive, it's an ebook reader, so you can use it as an app or um, the web version. You can purchase all your books there, and I will be showing you how to use the app. I will, you know, will be going through books, so if you guys are interested, you can purchase it using the code above. So this one is going to be black to move, so we are going to flip the board. And you can also choose the... <clears throat> uh, you can also... You can also flip the board. Uh, I mean, uh, you can also change the color of the board. I've chosen green because I like green. Uh, am I giving... Um, I, am I going to give suggestions on my favorite endgame books? Yeah, um, so the one that I was recommending last time was uh, 100 Endgames You Must Know. I think it's a very good book for players of all levels. It has a wide variety, so... If you're a coach or if you're um, uh, a student of chess, like all of us are, it's a good book to have and doesn't matter your level because it's such a wide variety. Like if you're a beginner, it starts very basic and as you get stronger, it, um, like the examples get more difficult and they become more useful so you can keep coming back to that book. So I do think how in Endgames you must know. It's very useful and I also like this book, so this one we will check it out together today. And uh, you guys can see what's in it. And again, I think this is for different levels. So from... I don't think from complete, maybe the first few chapters, I didn't look at them. But from maybe like 1000, 800,000 level to higher. Because then we get to like queen endings and, and complicated endings. And um, end games are very uh, solving end games is a good way to prepare for tournaments because it's just pure calculation. I mean, solving king and pawn end games are a good way to prepare for tournaments because it's just pure calculation. So it's a very good way for you to um, just uh, practice your calculation. So we're looking through breakthroughs, so there aren't that many in this position. So let's see what we can come up with. Yeah, this is a very nice position. So this is actually from a game from 1974. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to create a passed pawn. Um, but the, the way it looks like 4 against 4, like we shouldn't be able to do it. But hopefully um, we know some uh, basic pawn breakthroughs. Uh, so what we want to do is um, start getting some pawns out of the way. Uh, so if you go h4, for example, and I take, and then you go f4, and now you have a big threat. And so now you're threatening g3. So for example, if I take, now one of your pawns has a more clear path in front of them. So they're trying to go to a queen. Uh, so there's only this f2 pawn that's in the way. So what we're going to do, we're going to distract this pawn that's in the way. So we're going to play g3. And now we run away. Okay, so let's try that again. So h4. And uh, there aren't that many good moves here for... I should move this out of the way. You guys don't need, don't need to see this. <laughs> Uh, so there aren't that many options here for uh, white. For example, if I go d king d5, okay, if we take, then nothing's gonna happen. So we're just gonna play g3 again. And you cannot allow me to take uh, on f2, so you have to take, and I take, and the king cannot stop a pawn from behind, right? The king has to be in front or next to the pawn to stop it, or in the box of the pawn. 
So this doesn't work yet, but unfortunately there is something uh, wrong with h4. Because white has a move and white is just winning here. So white has to realize what black is trying to do and find a way to stop this pawn breakthrough. So what is a move that comes to mind? Okay, I like this one better. <clears throat> yeah, you, you play g3, you, you stop your opponent's threat because they want to play g3, of course they cannot go f3. And now all the pawns are facing facing off each other and there is no more breakthrough because now your pawns just get stuck. So I have to capture somehow and now black is just lost because I have a defended pass pawn and white is just gonna go and take all the pawns. So this did not quite work out for us. So this h4 move uh, is not working out well for us. Uh, so now we can think about f4. Alright, uh, so let's check out this um, f4 move. Uh, so let's see what happens um, if uh, black takes either way. Uh, sorry, white takes either way. So if you take this way, now you've cleared the path for my pawn. So now I simply create a pass pawn. And your own pass pawn on f4 is just stuck because my king is in front of it. What are you going to do? And next I just go h4, h3 and I just queen and your king is just completely out of the way. Uh, and if e takes f4, so let's go here. So what to do now? We already saw something similar. So how does black win this? We saw this position but in a different move order. Because we started with... Um, okay, I don't want to say the move. No, move order in chess is uh, crucial. h4 then... Yeah, so we start with h4. So we already saw this position where we started with h4. It didn't work out. So, you know, sometimes um, in chess when you have a good idea, like working out but not quiet uh, you can try changing the order of the moves because sometimes that is what the issue is yeah h4 and g3 you guys are right because if i you're threatening both hg3 and e3 and yeah so we're threatening both hg fg and e3 and or h3 so this is just unstoppable so if you take now uh, obviously my g pawn is not going to become a um my, it's not going to become a pass pawn, so I'm going to get it, give it up and clear the way for this e-pawn. Alright, so f4, let's try king d5. So here you have to be careful, because I am attacking your pawn. Uh, so now here, <laughs> here we have to be careful, because now the king is very close. Uh, so if we make some kind of a reckless move, the king is just going to start taking pawn. So, pawns. So, for example, uh, if we go here, okay, if you go h4, I will just take it, and here you're already starting um, starting to lose. Because now you're just gonna, cannot hang on to this pawn. Okay, so what to do here? Uh, king f5, now I will already take it, because now, oh no, king f5, maybe I'll go king d4, and then my king will be... So, let me see how I feel about this music. This is too chill. This is too repetitive. Okay, let me move to something else. Okay, I like this one better. <clears throat> yeah, you, you play g3. You, you stop your opponent's threat because they want to play g3. Of course, they cannot go f3. And now all the pawns are facing facing off each other and there is no more breakthrough because now your pawns just get stuck. So I have to capture somehow and now black is just lost because I have a defended pass pawn and white is just gonna go and take all the pawns. So this did not quite work out for us. So this h4 move uh, is not working out well for us. Uh, so now we can think about f4. Oh, thank you for all the follows, guys, and well, and uh, thanks everyone for hanging out. We're very close to 500 follows, so hopefully we're going to break that today. And those of you who are just joining, I am using the Forward Chess app, where you, um, it's an. Yeah. <coughs> I'll just use the command. My voice is just cracking today. 
Hmm. Why didn't... Oh my god, I misspelled my command. How embarrassing. Uh, it's an interactive... Uh... Very good, thank you. <laughs> it's an uh, ebook reader and... Um, it's a great way for you to study. And um, if you like doing puzzles on a board, then you can just completely minimize the board part so you can maximize the book part and then you can set it up on a board and solve it if you just kind of want to avoid the book part you know you're just um, trying to focus on your um, puzzles and uh, on the diagram you can uh, minimize the other one okay i can show you so we can just make it a book or we can make it a board and depending on what you're doing and what you like to do. So since we're doing both now, I have it set it this way. But I do like to save on a board. So I, I um, the only time I like to save on a computer or an app is when um, is when I'm preparing for an online tournament. That's when I find it. Um, uh, it's when I find it to be whoa. Oh no. Something happened. Uh, that's when I find it useful to s solve on a computer because then your mind, your eyes get used to solving on a computer. But if you're playing in an OTV tournament, then I do recommend solving on a board. And but then, then it doesn't really matter where your book is or where the puzzles are coming from, right? Because you're just setting up on a position, anyways. <clears throat> but when I before I was playing in the um, But before I was playing in the US Championships online or before the online Olympiad, like I was solving it on the computer so, so your brain, my brain could get used to it. I mean, okay, it didn't, but that was, that was the idea. Can I use this code for Netflix? Yes. Alright, uh, so let's check out this um, F4 move. Uh, so let's see what happens. Um, if uh, black takes either way, ah, uh, sorry, white takes either way. So if you take this way, now you've cleared the path for my pawn. So now I simply create a pass pawn, and your own pass pawn on f4 is just stuck because my king is in front of it. What are you going to do? And next, I just go h4, h3, and I just queen, and your king is just completely out of the way. Uh, and if e takes f4, so let's go here. So what to do now? We already saw something similar. So how does black win this? We saw this position but in a different move order because we started with... Um, okay, I don't want to say the move. No, move order in chess is uh, crucial. H4 then... Yeah, so we start with H4. So we already saw this position where we started with H4. It didn't work out. So, you know, and sometimes um, in chess when you have a good idea, like it's working out but not quiet, uh, you can try changing the order of the moves. Because sometimes that is what the issue is. Yeah. H4 and G3. You guys are right. Because if I... You're threatening both HG3 and E3 and H3. No, no, you're fine. I understood what you said. I understand people make typos and stuff. This isn't my personal channel where I ban people for uh, being wrong. Yeah, so we're threatening both H, G, F, G, and E3 and or H3. So this is just unstoppable. So if you take... Now, uh, obviously, my G pawn is not going to become a... Um, my, it's not going to become a pass pawn. So I'm going to get it, give it up and clear the way for this E pawn. Okay, I don't ban people for being wrong on my channel. I do mute them for two minutes. But it's, a, it's a harsh environment. All right. So f4, let's try king d5. So here you have to be careful because I am attacking your pawn. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're wrong a lot. Um, no, I in, in my channel, like when I do puzzle rush or something, like I do say that everyone is welcome to give suggestions, but if they gave me a wrong suggestion, that's a two minute timeout. So, you know, very, very strict chat.
Uh, so now here, <laughs> here we have to be careful because now the king is very close. Uh, so if we make some kind of a reckless move, the king is just going to start taking pawn. So pawns. So for example, uh, if we go here, okay. If you go h4, I will just take it. And here you're already starting, um, starting to lose because now you're just gonna cannot hang on to this pawn. Oh no 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 no! I clicked on the move. <laughs> Hopefully you guys didn't see it. Okay, so what to do here? Uh, king f5. Now I will already take it because now. Oh no, king f5? Maybe I'll go king d4 and then my king will be in the square. That's the kind of coach I need. Maybe every time you guys say, um, what should I do? Every time someone says something wrong or someone gives me a right answer, I should take a sip. Okay, I'm one third done with this and this, this is just god awful. Oh man. Okay, but too many people are saying the same move, so I don't feel like I need to take a sip. Yeah, so we go h4. And again, if the pawn takes, we already saw this position a million times. This would be like fifth time we're seeing this position today. We just go g3. Um, okay, so now king e4. And now, here is the crucial move. Alright, one person is suggesting f3. What does everyone else think? Mm, h3 or f3 so those are our candidate moves right so let's let's uh figure out how to choose between them maybe someone can tell us uh, why one is better than the other so again uh, don't be afraid of participating in chat yeah so there's a big difference um between h3 and f3 so someone pointed out if h3 Then there is king f3 and now the king is going to be here and uh, the king is going to be here. The king is going to be in the square and the king is going to catch the h pawn. So let's go back to our original position. So whether you go f3 or h3 you're creating a pass pawn. So it's a matter of stopping your opponent um, king from getting to your pawn. Uh, so you can go either again f3 or h3 but one of them a lot gives the f3 square to your opponent's king and the other one takes it away so in this position we had like a million pawn breakthroughs right like take but now h3 and now this f3 key square uh, is uh, occupied uh, so pawn end games are very concrete but i mean they do have some finesse to them so it's not just complete br brute force right yeah, this one has a lot of fun end games. So actually, maybe we can just go to a different. Uh, let's go to a different chapter. Let's go to outside pass pawn. Uh, wait. Okay, this one is complicated. <laughs> let's go to something. What do I want to go to? Let's go to. What do we want to go to? Okay, let's go to let's go to chapter one. Let's go to something simple so people don't complain. Yeah, this is kind of a tricky one. So if king h seven, um, so the classical way of winning is to go g eight, but also here you don't want a queen and stalemate, so you get a rook. So this one was a simple one. Okay, let's go to this one. So this is why to move. This okay. I'm not. I don't want to scroll up too much because I don't want you guys to see the answer. But this uh, this book has a lot of funny comments. Oh, thanks for all the follows, everyone. <laughs> all right. So this one is why to move. So in this position, apparently, um, uh, apparently white, um, white resigns. Oh, so you know this book? Yeah, I'm just checking it out and I, I, I'm actually really enjoying it so far. And, uh, like before my stream, I kind of, um, browsed through it fast. I didn't, you know, I don't read the books from, uh, chapter to chapter, but, um, 
yeah, this is a good book. And if you're buying it and you're new to uh, Forward Chess, do use the code and get $10 off this book. It's a fun book. Uh, so I I didn't start on chapter one, well, I did, but uh, I jumped to chapter like two or three, but now I'm back to chapter one. So which book is it? It's Van Perlos and Game Tactics. So it's here. Van Carlos and game. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, so the nation, I agree with you. So, uh, last time I was going through 100 end games, you must know, and today I'm doing this, and that's one of the things that I said like this. If you're doing working on that book, like this is a nice compliment to that book because it has uh, some practical end games. Yeah, and you know, like I like when positions are from like end game positions are from games, so you know that do is do happen in a game. And one thing that I was talking about um, about end games is the reason why it's good to know like your theoretical basic end games is. Uh, beca because because uh, by the time we get to the end of the game, you're tired. You don't have time, so. You Unless you want to have your basics down, so you're not wasting uh, so much time trying to figure everything out. It's kind of like the opening, right? When you sit down and you play your openings, like you want to know some of the basics, so you're not just figuring out chess from the beginning. So once you get to the end game part, you want to have your basic knowledge, so you're not just um, completely lost. So at least you have some kind of foundation. Alright everyone, thanks for joining and have a great night!